welcome guys to That Bible Guy and to your series on Isaiah. Um, today we're going to cover Isaiah 47 and 48 and the title is God Cares About the Small Things. God Cares About the Small Things. Do hope you're all doing well. I say every morning thank you so much for all your comments, shares and views on this site. Let's get God's word out there. That has certainly become my tagline and it's very very appropriate. I'm uh, praying for us all at the moment. Uh, I'm sure wherever you live right now, there's discussions around your lockdown. When's it going to end? What way is it going to end? Is it going to be phased? Um, I know decisions are going to be made this week. Here on ours and on a slight listening, you hear different things. Um, certainly I felt a couple of weeks ago like there's no way this is going to end almost hardly for months and months. But it maybe looks like we might start to is our opening of the lockdown and prayerfully obviously there's no second spikes of this coronavirus which is the reason why I started this series um, but we'd all like to say goodbye to it and I'm praying you're all keeping well um, I hope you're all doing well thanks for tuning into the series um, so we're looking at Isaiah 47 and 48 today so we're covering two chapters but we're just briefly touching on 47 which is all about the fall of Babylon and ultimately God's saying look you Babylonians you know, you're not going to get away with this either. Although you are, I'm using you to discipline my people, because you're so cruel and violent, you know, you will be dealt with. But you'll also fall. You know, your gods can't help you. You know, relying on the gods and the your mediums and all your clairvoyance and all the things you go to, they can't help you. We heard about them yesterday, Bell and Nebo. They, they can't do you any good. Unfortunately, it's a waste of time. So in other words, just be careful where you put your trust. So this is what he covers in 47. Be careful where you put your trust. You know, put things to the test. You should have done this with the gods, the false gods, but you didn't. Um, you should have relied on me. So we're on Isaiah 48 then. Stubborn Israel. Not the first time that you would have described them like that. Um, that's the title put in by man, of course. So Isaiah 48. So... It starts off with, listen to this, O house of Jacob. Again, God's got the people to listen. Listen up to what I'm about to say. You who are called by the name of Israel and come from the line of Judah, who, you who take oaths in the name of the Lord and invoke the God of Israel, but not in truth or righteousness. So it says they invoke the God of Israel, but not in truth or righteousness. You who call yourselves citizens of the holy city and rely on the God of Israel, the Lord Almighty is his name. So the whole idea is that yet again, and I talked about this, the problem with false with religion is they worship God in pretense. So the, his name was on their lips. They might have went to the temple. They might have complied with some of the regulations. But it says, but not in truth or righteousness. They're the key qualities required of a worshiper of God. What's going on in the heart? You know, again, they worship in pretense. And we're told in verses 3 to 6, I foretold the former things long ago, my mouth, and my mouth announced them and I made them known, then suddenly I acted and they came to pass. So God, his sign of who he was, has said it many times, is that he told the people ahead of time. He gave them, and it says repeatedly here, he knew that their, their, their hearts were hard, he knew, for I knew how stubborn you were. Therefore I told you these things long ago before they happened I announced them to you so that you could not say my idols did them. So God gave them enough evidence and information and enough instruction that they wouldn't be without excuse. Remind you of Romans 1. God gives us enough to respond to that we're all going to have to answer for our sin. We don't have any excuse for how we live. It's just a little reminder. The people didn't have an excuse here and say, well, I didn't know, you didn't tell me. I, I wasn't clear on these instructions. God made it very, very clear. Again, like Romans 1, God has made himself clear for all people to see so that people are without excuse. When we turn to God, he, he, he frees us of our sin because we can't get rid of it ourselves. But if we ignore all his instructions, we are not without excuse. Um, it's very warm in here today. Nice problem to have. Verses 12 to 16 then. Um, again, as I said many times, it's all about Israel being freed now. Listen to me, O Jacob, Israel whom I have called. I am he. I am the first and I am the last. 
my own hand laid the foundations of the earth and my right hand spread out the heavens. When I summon them, as he will, they'll all stand up together. So come together and listen. So again, he's getting all these people around him. Everyone listen up, come together, listen to this. I'm the only God there is. I created the heavens and the earth and I'll gather them up together at some point because that's how amazing and powerful I am. And that's the demonstration of it. So it was another reminder to his people, again in this situation, as they're about to go off to Babylon, is just remember who I am. The gods aren't going to save the Babylonians. The false gods aren't going to save you. It's all about me. Remember, people don't carry their gods. God carries the people. So you kind of wonder, though, does God care about the small things in their lives? The people can see, right, your God, the majestic God who created the heavens and the earth. But I'm down here on earth, I'm a little small grasshopper in your eyes. And I've got little things that bother me day to day. Does God care about the small things? Well, the title is God cares about the small things. And we're going to read in verse 17. It tells us. This is what the Lord says. Your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. I am the Lord your God who teaches you what is best for you, who directs you in the way you should go. If only you had paid attention to my commands, your peace would have been like a river, your righteousness like the waves of the sea. Incredible. God says, I'm the Lord your God who teaches you what's best for you. I direct you in the way you should go, and I teach you what's best. That's what God does for his people. He directs them in the way they should go, and he teaches them what's best. In other words, God is actively involved in his people's lives. God is actively involved in all the details, in all the big things, and in all the small things of our lives. He's interested in the small things. He's interested in the small details because he's the one that's directing us in the ways that we should go. This has really helped me. This idea of a yeah, big, powerful, majestic God but he actually helps me in the small things he, because he cares about the small things. I don't know about you, but it's, if I'm going to get stressed out, for me personally, and know we're all a bit different, I'm more likely to get stressed about the small things. The family that know me, if Simon gets frustrated looking, it's because of a lot of little small things. It's, it's almost never a big calamity or a big problem. And it's the little things that, that, that this morning I was praying and I felt like God answers the small prayers. I remember days, I remember this specific, I remember a time when I worked in the hospital and I just had my first child. She was only very, very young, not sleeping very well at night time. And I remember every lunchtime, I only had this little quick lunchtime, a new job, it's quite new to me, child not sleeping at night time. And I just felt, you know, when you feel pulled in all these different directions, no one thing was catastrophic, but it's just a lot of pressure and stresses. But it got to the point where I was tired. I didn't really know what was bothering me. I didn't actually know what is actually wrong. I just feel weighed down. I remember going out and praying. I remember the first few times I did it, I went out and prayed at lunchtime. And it was a quick 25 minute prayer, just about got something to eat. And I went out and prayed around this part, quite quiet. I remember, specifically remember coming back from that prayer every single lunchtime. And it was because it happened the first few times I came back and I thought, you know what, I know what's wrong with me now. I know why I'm feeling like this and I know what I need to do to, to change it. And every single lunchtime I remember going out and I couldn't wait to get out and pray because I knew I'd come back with a solution, with clarity on my problem. And you know what it taught me? It taught me what it, I'm being taught every day at the moment. God cares about the small things in your life. We all, it's easy to believe in a big powerful God who created the mountains and the heavens that he put us on this little, this earth in this vast universe. It's easy to believe in that God at times because it, if God is real then clearly he's powerful and majestic. But the question becomes is he interested in the small details of your life though? That's what for me what matters even more. It doesn't really matter to me in some ways that God is the creator of the earth, of course it does, but if it means he's not interested in my small things that I care about, that, that tr would trouble me slightly. So what matters to us day to day? Our mood, just how we feel, 
the things that interest us or don't interest us, the things that trouble and make us anxious. You know, our relationships day to day. You know, our hopes and dreams. All these things. We can feel like, yeah, God made all the, the earth, but does he care about them things? Here's the point I make. If it troubles you, it troubles God. If it troubles you, it troubles God. Now, I'm not saying God's going to automatically take it away from you and you no longer have any trouble. But if it troubles you, it troubles God. If anything troubles my kids, it troubles me. And that's what I learned about God. And that's what he's saying here. I direct you in the way you should go. I teach you. I train you. Because I care about the small details in your life. If it bothers you, it bothers God. 1 Peter 5. This is a consistent theme in scripture. 1 Peter 5 reminds us of this. Peter writes and tells us in 1 Peter 5 verse 6. He says, and this is a good start, a bit like listen. Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand. So again, we mentioned his mighty hand. That he may lift you up in due time. Due time. The time will come by that mighty powerful God. But maybe before the time comes potentially. Or when, whatever stage. But maybe before the time comes. Verse 7. Cast all your anxiety on him. Why? Because he cares for you. Cast the big anxieties. No, cast some anxieties. No, 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 no. Cast all anxieties on him because he cares for you. God cares about the small things. He cares about what bothers us because he wants to teach us, he wants to direct us, and he wants to guide us. This is what Peter's telling us here. Cast it all onto God because he cares for you. Now here's a sign of our faith. Do you cast all your anxieties onto God? The answer to that will determine whether we believe do we Treat God like he cares about the small things. I'm saying today he cares about the small things. He cares about how you feel. He cares about your problems. Like I say, it doesn't mean he's going to answer it the way you think he's going to, but he cares about them. Do we treat him like he cares about them? It's That will be determined by whether we pray about these things. Whether we entrust them things to God. I, as I say, my favourite thing about God these days is how he answers all my all my prayers in some way but he answers the small prayers it's the small things it's my stepdaughter getting the job I don't know if it's going to last but it's it's answering that it's little details about the dating of an MOT a few months ago it's a small thing like you go to the shop and it ends up it wasn't open it's open the following day and you just get in at the right time or something really really minuscule it's the small things. Now I'm not saying he will always give you that car park and space he'll always give you everything you want but it's this it's that aspect of God. God cares about the small things. That's what helped me become a Christian. And it's certainly a strong believer. And it's what will help us to stay strong. So in this time, regardless of what you're going through, God cares about the small details. He promises us that he will teach us and direct us on the right path. Do we treat him like he cares about the small things? He certainly does. And he wants us to cast our anxieties onto him. I meant to say at the start, I shared a scripture yesterday um, about God, even to our old age and grey hairs. This morning, I turned on my phone and it was my Facebook memory from six years ago as I shared exactly that scripture. It just popped up on me this morning. I'm like, there's that scripture again. Shared it exactly six years ago and it just popped up at me this morning. Amazing. Even to our old age and grey hairs, he will sustain us. Amen. He cares about the small things. Whatever small things you're dealing with right now, they might seem small to, if you were to tell someone about them, but they're not small to you because they trouble you. If it troubles you, it troubles God. Thanks for tuning in today. Please continue to respond to these um, videos that you're watching. Let me know that you like them. Subscribe to the channel, that Bible guy. Please comment. Let's get his word out there. Amen.